Love, light, and blessings. This is Shamanic Firewife Priestess here. And a lot of my lovely subscribers have been asking me about my essential oils and my spirit waters because I, I do make my own um, blends and things like that. I don't really buy them. Um, so this is where I keep it, my nice, beautiful wooden box, um, because essential oil blends, um, they're not supposed to really be in the sunlight. So this way it keeps the sunlight from it, and I feel like it also closes in the magical intentions of them. That's just how I feel. doesn't mean somebody else will resonate with that, but I like to keep them closed in, just like the energies um, there. So I have seven spell bottles. Um, there's herbs in these back here, and the little... The little string represents the chakra. So this will be a spell bottle that I wear around my neck when I want to work with sacral, um, heart, and third eye, and crown, throat, sacral, and root. So if I'm doing a chakra spell or if I'm actually just wanting to wear the energy with me, I do that. There's crystals here to keep everything charged. These are absolute 100% organic oils. And sometimes I use herbs by themselves with a carrier oil or I will infuse a carrier oil and these absolute 100% organic blends that I get from a distributor. Or I would do both, blend different scents, blend the herbs, and use the carry oil. So it's depending on what I'm trying to do. Back here, which you probably can't see, um, these are oils that I created for specific deities that I work with. Because um, I do practice a form of Yoruba. And a lot of my deities are African. So they have their herbs. When I want to invoke them, when I want to work with them, these are for offerings and along with other rituals that I do, um, secret rituals that I do, I do like to always have their scents available. And these blends, again, I've made myself. Um, then if I want to work with um, Sabbaths, I'll, the God and Goddess oils that I've made because I do celebrate Sabbath. So this is my new agey side. Um, so, yes, yeah, so these are like moon and sun energy. So when I want to work with that, these oils are bringing in that type of energy for any candle work that I want to do. Or if I just want to put the oils on my person, this is my uh, angel. So I have the angel essential oil when I want to work with the angelic realm. And when I work with ancestors, I have a ancestor oil. And then this is the air element. So I, when I want to work with elements, I want to bring in um, element of air. I would use this earth element fire elements, and water elements. And these are my own chakra blends that I've also created. So you have your crown, your third eye. I'm sorry, yeah, your crown, your third eye, your throat, your heart, sacral, um, I mean solar plexus, sorry. Heart, solar plexus, sacral, and root chakra. And then these eight are for actual witchcraft. You know, nitty gritty intention setting witchcraft and protection so so these are the blends that i have that i've created um and again you can buy um the absolute oils and mix the scents in and get yourself a carrier oil um a good carrier oil that i started off with was um olive oil so olive oil would be a, a good blend to use i feel more comfortable like this um will be a good blend to use okay um, you can get coconut oil, you can get um, almond oil, um, they have sesame seed oil, whatever carrier oil speaks to you, because that's mainly what the oil, is, a blend is going to be made out of. And then you're going to put a couple of drops of this and that, depending, like if you want to work with fire, what herbs, you know, represent the element of fire, what herbs are going to mix and make a good scent but also bring in that fiery energy. So it's really important to know correspondences. Um, when I was first learning correspondences, um, I used this book a lot. I'm sorry, guys. It's the Llewellyn, um, a comprehensive and cross-reference resource for pagan and Wiccans. Um, and it's the Llewellyn's um, The Power of Correspondences book. 
Okay, and it has everything. The Complete Book of Correspondences by Luana. Sorry about that. And it is by Sandra Pines. And this has herbs. This has Will of the Year. Like if you want to set intentions for any kind of um, spells or anything like that. And you don't want to have 20 million books. This has everything in it. Um, so this is a good good thing when you wanting to study herbs and creating your own blends according to that intention. This will tell you the medicinal and spiritual um, for each of the herbs, you know, whatever herbs speak to you. Um, when it comes to herbs as um, essential oils as well, there are a couple of things to, if you're going to buy oils from somebody who makes them, um, to know if something is synthetic or authentic. Like if you're going to buy um, actual, the actual full absolute essential oil and always look at the brand. So look at the reviews, you know, do people, the people the, are, are the people that are reviewing this, so they have good positive feedback, bad positive and cost. Like if something's too cheap, because there are certain blends, like certain essential oils, like Jasmine, Neroli that are very hard to get. So they're going to cost you more. Um, blends that cost 99 cents, most likely are synthetic. You know what I mean? Um, also look at packaging. You know, when you are using essential oils, um, when essential oil is real, essential oil needs to be in a brown bottle. Um, look at if this in a brown bottle. Look at it if it's in a blue bottle. You know what I mean? Because dark bottles, either blue or brown, usually is an indication that it's actually real oil because essential oil does not do good in clear bottles. Um, nor does it do good in plastic bottles because real essential oil will actually deteriorate and eat away at plastic. So if you see essential oils in plastic containers, it's usually not real essential oils. I know that's kind of controversial with some people, but this is this is real things. I did study aromatherapy. I am an, you know what I mean, like I am an aromatherapist. So, but moving on from that. Um, the name on your essential oils. If you're just going to buy absolute oil, um, make sure that the name is Latin. Because if you buy rosemary, for example, um, essential oil, it's going to say rosemary, but it's also going to say the Latin name for it, which is Rosa Marinis Officialis. You know what I mean? So it's going to have a Latin name. If it doesn't have a Latin name, most likely, it's not going to be real essential oil. Essential oils that you buy at a dollar store or Walmart, even I love dollar stores, but usually dollar store essential oils are not real oil. Again, especially if they're not in glass and they don't have the Latin name on them. So those are just a few things to be on the lookout to make sure you're actually getting what you're paying for and their actual blends, you know, and things of that nature when you're buying it from a distributor. Not the ones that people make themselves, but I'm talking about the ones you buy from stores and stuff like that. Um, spirit waters. I do make my own spirit waters. Okay. Um, when I'm making spirit waters, when it's more water, um, I try to avoid plastic or metal because that also, unless you're planning to use your crystal elixirs or your spirit waters right away, they tend to wear down faster. So these, I got these real cheap, are really good for storing your spirit waters. These nice little spray bottles because one it'll keep the sun direct sunlight out of it so it extends the life um if you're not going to use your spirit water within the next 24 to 48 hours the water will go ranchet unless you put some kind of preservative um preservation preservative chemicals in it um a good idea this is what i've personally used um brandy so i would put i'm going to use brandy and i'm making spirit water i'm going to use this much alcohol, the rest water. I also tend to make smaller bottles of spirit water because I don't want my spirit water to go bad. You know what I mean? So I kind of make them small like this, and you know, as use kind of thing. I don't make big bottles because no matter how much preservation, sooner or later it's going to go bad. Um, so brandy is good. Vodka. If you're not into alcohol, vinegar, distilled vinegar. And be careful what type of vinegar because apple cider vinegar or the ones with different flavors are going to kind of change the scent of your spirit water and that kind of thing. So I tend to use plain distilled vinegar. And um, the, the water that I would use, so it would be like one third, let's say, um, alcohol and the rest water. I would either use um, charged moon water that I do in the full moon. 
Um, I tend to use holy water as a, a base for water um, or uh, purified water. So any of those three. Some people use uh, spring water. I don't live by a spring and I don't buy spring water. So, um, but you can definitely do that. Um, and I tend to stick herbs in my uh, spirit water if I'm tending to use this quickly. If it's a um, spirit water that I'm tending to use over an extended period of time, I won't put the herbs itself. Same thing with the essential oils. If you're going to use the herbs themselves, which I have done with this blend, there is actual herbs in it. This is because I'm going to use this quickly, which I'm pretty much almost done with this. Um, because it won't last past a year if you actually put herbs. If you're planning to have your oils for years, then I would recommend using absolute essential oils, a carrier oil, and kind of mixing the scents together. Always writing down your recipes because you can tend to forget the recipes. I've done that many, many times because I make a lot of things on intuition as well. And then I'm like, oh my God, I, I love this smell or I, this really kind of spiced up my spell work or really kind of just really made my candle special. Like, boo, now I don't remember what blend it was. Um, okay, so if that sounds too complicated with the alcohol and the water and everything, you can always do the simplest thing, which is how I started. And um, how I started, oh, one more thing, sorry, with the um, spirit waters. You can also put essential oils in your spirit water. So I like to put a couple of drops, Bago Santo, sandalwood, whatever, you know, herbs and scents you like to work with, you can definitely put a couple of drops of absolute oil will go a long way, one or two drops, mix it with different scents, put in the water, the alcohol, shake it up, bless it, do whatever spiritually speaks to you. Everybody has different paths, you know, whether you're dedicated to a deity. Um, I, with my spirit waters, because I am a practice shamanic practitioner, I do do, um, I do practice um, rituals, offerings, and all these things before I would actually make a spirit water. And then after, I would leave it charging for a bunch of days on my sacred space altar to my deities because I do believe that kind of pumps up the energy. But you don't have to do that because, again, everybody works different ways. And everybody has different beliefs. So whatever works for you, that's the right way to do that. Um, and then if this is all too complicated, the easiest way that I learned to make spirit water is Florida water. Florida water is a spirit water. It already has alcohol in it. That's why it's, um, you can buy these at the dollar store. You can buy these online. Amazon sells them. Like you could buy them anywhere. Um, what I would do with Florida water, you could use it in its regular form, put it in a spray bottle, or you could pump it up. So, Let's say you're like, I want to create a rosemary water, but I don't know if I want to go through all the steps of water and alcohol, and that's a lot of stuff to do. You can just put rosemary in here. You can put roses in here. Like you can put whatever flowers, actual flowers in here. You can mix this with essential oils. So you can, instead of using moon water and things and worrying about buying alcohol or vinegar, you can just put this in a bottle, put some herbs in it, blend it with some essential oils, and you have spirit water. So you can even use Florida water as a base. You can use regular water as a base. This is good for long term because this already has the preservatives in it. But again, you can put your own preservatives in it as well. Um, another quick little tip, when you're making essential oils and blends, you don't have to have a lot of herbs. Like I started off literally with only 13 herbs, okay, that spoke to me. And I kind of over time learned how to mix and match and do that kind of stuff. And when I used to forget correspondences, because maybe sometimes I don't want to get a book, I label. So I, not only would I put the name of the herb, but I will put what element. So if I want to, let's say, use clove in an essential oil or spirit water, I know that it has an earth element to it. So if I want to work with earth or if I'm making something that has to do with fire or something to do with transformation or grounding, these are the, you know what I mean? I will use clove. So it's an easy way for me to remember correspondences. Because that's why I have colors on my oils, it's just easier when you're looking at it just to grab it up and put that, you know what I mean? So just to make it easier. So hopefully this video was helpful. Um, thank you to all my lovely subscribers and please like, subscribe and comment below and let me know if you wanna see more do-it-yourself videos on this channel because I'll be more than glad to share other tips of doing things on, on your own. Much love and light, bye guys.